which one of these sentences are a proposition and what are the truth values of those that are propositions? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six statement and I want you just to work with your colleague on them. So as we said, the answer for this activity, the first one is false, the second one is false, the third one is a true, the fourth one is false, and the number A is not a proposition. This is an equation, and the last one is an order, so this is not a proposition. Uh, the next thing we want to discuss is what we call by a conditional statement. You will find in this course that conditional statement is a little bit harder than by a conditional statement. And this is really a strange thing that you would experience. With by a conditional statement, we have a definition that we have both a statement, P and Q, and both are a propositions. <coughs> And the by a conditional statement said is the proposition P if and only if Q. And this is where you will find most of mathematical theory used. You will say, for example, the by a conditional statement P implies a Q. Is it true when P and Q have the same truth value and is false otherwise? A by a conditional statement are also called by implications because this is means that the hypothesis leads to the conclusion and the conclusion leads to the hypothesis. Let us take an example before we start wondering what is this. If you have P and Q and both are a proposition, then we can form a by a conditional statement by saying P if and only if Q. So the truth table of this by a conditional statement, and I want just to point here a very important note for you guys. Those truth tables, we have to learn them by heart. We have to recall them in the exam paper. We have to know how they behave, how they function. And there is, there, there is no difference between the truth table we have for AND and OR in digital circuit, in, in digital logic, and this one. Because digital logic is built upon this science. So when, when we have the case of by a conditional, we have P and Q. If true leads to true and true go, take us back to true, then the outcome is true. So true is if and only if true. Now the second one is true and it give us the outcome false, but false would not lead us to true, so the outcome is false. False leads us to true. Never. You never have a false fact leading to a truth. So a lie will never be a true fact. So false leading us to true, this is false. But now a false fact leads to a false conclusion is a true. And this is how logic works. If you have a false theory, this is give you a false conclusion. And if you have a false conclusion based on a false theory, which means altogether compound will be a true proposition. Now, more example. Sometimes B implies a Q has the same truth value as P implies a Q and Q implies B. Combining them together, and if you do the truth table for all of them, you will find that this statement is a true. And sometimes we call it if and only if and can be expressed in many mathematical theory or textbooks as IFF. Example, if you take the statement B to be the statement you can take the flight and let Q be the statement you buy a ticket, then P if and only if Q. Here what we are saying that you buy a ticket you can take the flight if and only if you buy a ticket, or you buy a ticket if and only if you take the flight. So this is the translation of this by a conditional statement to a simple English. So the implication of this statement is, if you buy a ticket, you can take the flight, which is true. Both are true, 
So the outcome is true. The implication of this, the implication of this is true. If you don't buy a ticket, you cannot take the flight as well. Is it false? False proposition leading to a false implication. So the whole outcome is true. Example of a truth table. This is how things really look like. You will have a variable, a proposition variable like P, and another proposition variable like Q, and you have the outcome, the implication, which is R, and now you want to find the value for the equation above. This is a simple exam question. This is a typical one. So put on this slide big star with red color. Because in the exam, I will be asking you to do the same equation. So here you have the value for P and Q. Same as what you did for digital uh, circuit. When, when you build the truth table for P and Q, zeros and one. Now one is a true, zero is false. Just replace them with the truth, true and false. So we have P and the Q and we have the value of R. Now what you need to fill is not R. True, not true is false. Not false is true, not true is false and so on. Now, what is the value of P or a Q? Now to look to the value of P and Q. True or true is a true. True or true is a true. True or false is a true. True or false is true. False or true is a true. And false or true is a true. And false or false is false. And false or false is false. Now, go back to the truth table of implies and apply in the last row, which is we need now the result. Once you have a true leading us to F, this is F. Once you have a true goes to true, this is a true. Once you have true goes to F, it's F again. Once you have a true implies a true is a true, and a true implies false is false. A true implies true is a true. False implies false is always a true, because the hypothesis is a true, and the conclusion is a true. False is the hypothesis, and the, the for, uh, and not R is the conclusion, and P or Q is the theory, okay? So a false theory leads us to a false implication or a false conclusion. So this is the true, and we have now a false, a true result coming from a false uh, theory, which is a true. The last one? The last slide is by a conditional. This is okay. this is a, a conditional if statement. This is if statement. Okay. Do you have any questions about this guy? Yeah. What is R? Just my. It's just a propositional value. Right. I propose its value. I put all these rows myself, mm -hmm. and this is the no, the rows no. that I fill. Yeah. Okay. So not R. I filled myself. B or Q I fill, and the outcome of them, I take the conditional statement, the F statement truth table, and I apply it there. I look to the truth table, and I calculate the outcome of each one of them. All right, so are you right yourself? Yeah. Now let us discuss something called equivalent proposition. We said before, two propositions are equivalent if they will always have the same truth value. So this is by a conditional state. Show using a truth table that the conditional is equivalent to the contra-positive. Contra so if we have, for example, P and Q, I put, I fill the value for true and false values myself. So me, Myself, I filled those values. Okay? Now take not Q and take not P. Calculate not P based on the negation truth table. Every time I say the true, not P is false. Every time I say false, not P is a true. Every time I say the Q is a true, not a Q is false. And so on. Uh, if it's false, it's not a Q is a true. If it's a true, not a Q is false. If it is 
false, not Q is a true. Now again, apply P implies a Q. Apply the P implies a Q true table that we have in, in the previous slides. We have true implies a true is a true. True is implies a uh, false is false. False implies a true is a true. And false implies false is as well a true. Do the same for the negation. When you have not P and not a Q, you will end up saying that false implies false is a true. True implies, uh, sorry, false implies a true is false. True implies false is a true. True implies a true is a true. Now compare both of them. P implies a Q and not a Q implies not P together. You will find a true here. False, true, a true. Based on this true theory, we say both statements are equivalent. equivalent because they have the same a truth value in the truth theory. So both statements are a true. Now, another example. Show using a true table that neither the converse or nor the inverse of an implication are not equivalent to the implication. Here we start with something really simple. We take the value of P, we take the value of Q, we do not P and not Q like before in the previous example. Now let us fill the first, the column of P implies a Q. We know that it's a true, false, true, true by the previous example. And not P implies not Q is a true, true, false, true. Now, would be able to match P implies a Q to Q implies B P? No, because the truth table has a mismatch in the second row here. Here I have false, here I have a true, and here I have a true. So based on that, we just prove that the converse nor the inverse, they are equivalent to the uh, the implication itself. So P implies a Q is not equivalent to the converse nor the inverse. Based on the truth table showing there. The last topic of today is going to discuss how we can approach um, um, a compound proposition based on the precedence of them. Similar to computer programming, when we say precedence of the operators, take the parentheses and then take the star and the division before the plus and minus. We apply the same rule. Not always take the first order. So we always deal with not as a first class entity. We do it first. Then you do and or before anything else. And then you do the conditional, which is the implies, and the by conditional if and only if comes the last one to proceed with. So if you look to the statement P or Q implies not R is equivalent to having a parenthesis P or Q implies not R. If you take for if, if the intended meaning is P or Q implies not R, you can also convert this statement based on the law that we are going to study later on in, in coming in class to the same, to a simplified formula. It's similar when you say five multiply two plus two and then you say this is like 10 plus five. You take the parentheses out and you put the outsider variable inside the equation. So then the parentheses must be used. One famous application of this science, which is the propositional logic, is translating English to propositional logic, system specification, Boolean searching, um, logic puzzles, logic circuit, the one we use in computer, and all diagnosis method. Uh, and this is an example, just to remind you that this is the same of AND gate or gate you studied in the last semester. The inventor is basically the negator. Then the not. When you have P, not P is the inventor in the digital circuit. Or gate is basically the. Or P or. 
the all. And gate is basically the end that we discuss. So the inverter not gate is an input bit and to produce the negation of the bit. The OR gate is basically two inputs, but it takes the equivalent of the disjunction of two bits and gate it takes and to produce the equivalent of conjunction of two bits. And this is basically a symbol one. When you speak about compound statement, we are speaking about compound circuit similar to the one here in the diagram. When we have P, and not the Q, and then we take that value, and we make an OR gate, we make an OR gate with not R to give you a final outcome result. So here, with this example, we could understand how to employ this logic in computer science and digital circuit, and how we employ it every day in our programming. Thank you, guys. This is the end of the lecture of today.